Hey everyone, this is Tracy with Color Me This. Welcome to the channel and welcome back if you are returning. Today is episode 234. We are continuing on with the floral full page scene and I am replicating the scenes in four quadrants with four sets of pencils. We are going from the largest set of pencils and to, so we did 180 color on mon on the first day. Then yesterday we did the Prismacolor 150. So now the hull is getting even narrower and I am on the Polychromos 120 and I have my first set of pencils ready to go. I am rotating uh, the Prismacolor section is still pretty rough. I did not get back to it last night. I am going to rotate because I want to you do the easy away from the spine image, saving the spine image and the smallest uh, set of pencils, which are the luminance, saving that for tomorrow. So uh, this section here is the color, and that is the most complete. Um, I've been in there a couple different times working on my shadows and the depth. So we will be referencing that side today when we do this bottom left quadrant. So I already have some discoveries about the color options with the polychromos, but I will start with the center yellow working out. And for the yellow, orange, and red, there really isn't anything too interesting to report on. Hub is in the room with me today. It was very hot out there, and so he is chilling at the computer for a bit before he takes his nap. I have some things I need to do later today, so I am actually going to try really hard to remember to l give you all the names and numbers. Now, I have the numbers in white, so that's easy. The names are going to be challenging. This particular orange is the only one that I have, and I bought these in a, ca in a case years ago. And it is all uppercase caps, very difficult to read. Uh, here is another one that shows the upper and lower case lettering. It is in shiny gold that is really hard to read. I was very impressed with the Prismas. As I said, I'm, I'm not a Prisma girl, so um, I don't use those very often. Yesterday was probably the a biggest scene, aside from when I did my winter reindeer Santa with the reindeer scene that was all sorts of problematic for me because it was so messy. Um, so this scene that I'm working on with the flowers is going way better. Uh, so with these all caps, it tells me orange glaze and the number is 113. So I had been pulling out the lightest orange from the orange section to do this little middle bit here as well as the heart and a half a heart. These are of the professional pencils. These are the hardest ones that I own and, uh, and not quite the driest. The Pablos are a little bit drier, uh, but they don't seem to be as hard. They are much softer. So now I'm going into my yellow to light orange and I have 109 dark chrome yellow. Oh, and I should show you the full set. Light to dark, which is what I like to do. Ah, uh, we've got 105 light cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow 107, and dark chrome yellow 109. Starting with the dark chrome yellow. Uh, these definitely feel more translucent. They, I guess I, you don't feel a translucent. They look more translucent and they feel uh, more like they skim across the very smooth surface. Uh, they do not have like a buttery, oily feel at all. Even though they are an oil-based pencil, they do feel pretty dry. Though as I said, not as dry as the Pablos. 
So I just switched from the lighter orange, orange yellow to this, I can't remember the term, cadmium yellow. And then we have this cadmium yellow light. Uh, ironically, of the different petals, these petals look the orangest. Don't forget that most pencils are will erase nicely. Like if I was being really picky, I could uh, erase this a bit and get more of the, now that I know how these behave, light cadmium yellow. I did very quick mock-ups. Uh, so uh, depending on how picky you are, what I like really the best about colored pencils in general is the fact that they erase. So the cool thing about these polys is that I've owned them forever. Uh, they are the second. I got the Albrecht Durer 60 set first, uh, coming from the watercolor world. Uh, when I hit the road in the trailer and I was not allowed any, or I didn't allow myself glitter or wet, messy paint, I bought the Albrecht Durer. Then when I got involved with the nature and animal portraits, I got the full set of the polys. So now we're into our oranges and you're gonna see that this one that I have that's all caps, I don't really know why. I've never investigated it. Uh, the lightest is orange glaze, 113, dark cadmium orange, 115, and light cadmium red, 117. Starting with the darkest, though, at the base of these tulips. Um, many of these, because I'm doing all of these uh, color family, yellow, orange, red, violet, purple, and most of the colors that I use are the browns, browns and blacks, and a little bit of orange, but like cinnamon is the color and terracotta. Uh, so most of these, like this has never been sharpened. It still has a point. So I'm just using it as is. Colored pencils, I will say, even if you color a lot, like I have been coloring every day, but I do get to rotate through a lot of sets. But colored pencils, if they're not a super soft, like a Prisma, uh, they last a long time. I might, uh, I don't know how I would challenge myself with trying to get a set low because I enjoy rotating through my sets. It's kind of the, a fun challenge to make sure that all of my pencils get equal, equal time on the drawing table. So I'm now to the middle color. I've gone a little heavy on the darker colors, but notice all of these, I didn't do a lot of the lightest, so I am okay with that. So now we're just gonna go in here, uh, fill in. I am working on this particular page on my shadows and getting some nice dark shadows. That's my goal. Wanting to play with these four sets of pencils with the color families. I That's how I started going from the center yellow, orange, red, and then a field of violet to purple. We are moving to the reds. Uh, I see that. I want to share this with you guys. Let's see, the lightest to the darkest. Uh, that not all of the wood is perfect. I actually have one that has like a dark burn mark in it, but it's probably a little knot. And then this has a little flaw. Uh, but these are a beautiful pencil. For the most part, perfect quality wise. Okay, from the lightest. Pale Geranium Lake, 121. Deep Scarlet Red, 219. Dark Red, 225. 
uh, I am very seriously considering, I don't know if I can do it before tomorrow, uh, but numbering the luminance. I might pull out my luminance that I'm going to use tonight and number them because they are so hard to read. Starting with the darkest red, working on the tulips. At this point, for these three sets of colors, I did not have any difficulty finding the three. But when I get into the violet to purple, which I am finding that I might be using the wrong term, because even in this set, the violet is actually the grape purple color. And then on the, like the magenta is the, what I consider violet. And then red violet is the non-purple dark pink coloring. Just forgot this one. I find with these that because I am pretty familiar with them, that I'm not using super light pressure. Like I, yesterday, with the Prismas, knowing how messy they get and how quickly they will just burnish to a slick, solid uh, surface without any warning, uh, I used very light pressure. So what I drew yesterday, I noticed looks pretty rough. And I will have to go in and get some more layers built up. Uh, that was deep scarlet red. And now the lightest color is pale geranium lake. Uh, there are quite a few reds to purples in this. I think I counted 16 on my, and I'll show you the swatch when we get to doing the violet. I don't want to spend a ton of time because I do want to get quite a bit of the coloring done and on the field of flowers there's a lot of colors I'm putting down to get the uh, variation that I'm looking for in the field as well as within the flowers themselves. So I'm going ahead and using this lighter red to fill in the tooth. I can even see a little bit of tooth left on the color. Uh, normally, I would leave a little bit of, of light and white, but I notice I'm filling almost all in, um, leaving a little bit of white over here. This, this is the most complete set of flowers, but everything's filled in kind of different for me. So that's the end of the reds. Now, moving into the purples, I want to share, this is how I used to do my swatches. Uh, this is done, I have a set of these swatches done with the polys in, on five different materials, I think. So I went ahead and used, a. I see a grid that I made, uh, and then I used, normally I write bigger than this, but I wrote small and tried to keep it uh, no more than two rows. Because some of these names are super long. I even abbreviated the light. Uh, that, I went three rows on that one and that one. So here are all of like the pink. Even the alizarin crimson is somewhat pink. Uh, here's a magenta. We'll talk about that in a second. Going all the way. And... I love that the this blue-violet is not the darkest, there's mauve. Uh, and then I even pulled Delft Blue, which is to me like the deepest grape color. And I did go pull, I'm using these blues for uh, drawing the English bridal. And I went and pulled Indenthrine and Dark Indigo, as well as Sky Blue. So... What I am noticing with the set of pencils, even yesterday, if we go up here and we look at the Prismacolor, see how the magenta, I think it's called mulberry, and then how much brighter the 
the pinky violet. It's called Plum for the Calore. So I'm having the similar problem that I had here with the Prisma, looking a little bit on the brown side that I want to avoid. Uh, over here, it is the magenta that actually comes across as a little bit brown. So I am not using that. I am using as my darkest in the, but not the, um, not the shading. I'm using middle purple pink. And then I have behind it uh, red violet 194. And ironically, I picked initially the magenta here because it looks like the color I want. If you come over here and you compare these two barrels, you I would assume that the color that I want for that deep um, pink violet here is magenta, but the magenta is the one that looks brown and this red violet actually is the color. Let's see if it's on this page. Yeah. It is not on this page. So I have set aside, not in the Lazy Susan, the color I don't want, which is magenta, which is what I pulled initially. And here is the red violet. And then I also have light red violet in part of my color scheme. I tried the Kaput Morton violet, uh, but that is definitely too brown. So as we get to the smaller sets, I imagine tomorrow with the luminance, I know the luminance has some really vibrant colors and I'm so excited because I've not used them. Just like all of these oh, violet to purples, um, most of them are, I, they're just not sharpened. Here's one, not sharpened. Um, and so that was a challenge for me. And I think I have about 12 pencils pulled for the, the full scale because I'm kind of going to play around with colors. So for this first large flower, uh, trying to maim it, I can see it. You might not be able to see it. It would probably be off just in the very corner. Uh, and my table, again, is sitting on my lap. It's just a giant clipboard. And so what I find and what you guys might see is sometimes off to one side or the other, it'll be a little blurry. And that is because I am not holding the clipboard flat. I am focused just on one area and I do try to make sure that where I'm coloring is the flattest, clearest you can see it. And sometimes my knuckle gets in the way. I try not to have that happen. So we are indeed starting with Mauve 249. It is not the first time I've seen the Mauve color, Mauve or Mauve, uh, being a purple a grape-like purple. So the middle or the inside of this flower, I'm trying not to have overly purple because I have a transition. I want to get all the way from this dark purple to that red-violet color. And it's a very small space to accomplish that. So I have, in addition to this dark mauve, I then am going to blue violet 137 and then moving along even more to the violets is the purple violet 136. Setting down this mauve color, I am now going to do some very light. This is definitely a blue violety grape color. So I just want to go very light because I'm going to put over the top of it the transition colors to get to our um, red violet. I'm just going to call it red violet instead of magenta because I already told you I rejected the magenta as actually coming across as too brown. So that's what I will call it for today. So now I'm moving even closer toward that violet and we should start seeing it. It actually does not look as violet as I would like, so. I'm kind of going linear, more than the oval shapes, as I get to the end of the flower, so I'm done with those two. I'm still putting them back in their 
order, and I'm going to skip one. I have one more kind of purpley tone. I'm going to go right to mang Manganese Violet 160. I'm so glad I have tape on these. And I know tomorrow I'm going to really wish that I had tape on the luminance tape, uh, numbers taped. But because the numbers don't have like a, it's not like I can just print out 1 to 100, since it's a 100 set. There's numbers all over the map. There's numbers as low as the 100s, and there's numbers as high as the 800s with the luminance. Okay, so now I need to continue to get, uh, I'm seeing some violet, and I'm still doing lines, light pressure, layer, layer, layer. I want to get those ends looking back over here, Oop, and we shifted a little bit. Th this side, I really want that end to become pink. So I have um, kind of a lavender pink, and I'm going to skip it. I am going to go to a very pink Matter Lake light coat of 129. And then I can tell you that the next color after this, I believe, is the fuchsia. So we're clipping right along to transition our colors. I'm kind of using this pink as a glaze to trans get a little better transition of the blue-violet colors to get it to transition to the pink-violet. Okay, putting that down, picking up Fuchsia 123. This one has been sharpened. I have used it. What's funny is it's been sharpened, but I feel like I should sharpen it again. But I just need some light layers of it. I feel like my transition is going nicely. So now I'm doing ovals. In fact, I'm kind of doing circles, mimicking the shape of the edge of the petals. I still have two more shades to go. This will be very minimal. Um, it is crimson of all things. Isn't that crazy? Crimson, 134. Looks not very red to me. But now we're getting into the vivid I might even, this color, I like it well enough. Let's see if it's enough to start getting some shape to these petals. Oh, and this one has not been sharpened. That is the way it came. I noticed uh, since these I've had since 2018 that and they do not live in a case. They're not protected anymore. I took them out the minute I moved here. I let them be loose in a tote so I can just more readily grab them and use them. Um, that some of them are getting a white film. It hasn't affected the colors when I use them, but I have noticed it. Yeah, this is coming along nice. So this is a good, this is that color I want. I don't want to go into the browns. I do have one darker color. I'm giving these petals a curved appearance. I do want to go back into the center a little bit. So, um, middle purple pink 125 is the best approximate color to the color. And I might have to adjust. I told you that my prisma that I chose uh, looks a little bit on the brownish side, but I'm pretty sure that I should be able to adjust. Uh, 
and get it back to looking more like the Calure, which is my largest set, and that is the goal, to see how close I can get these to match. I can tell that I have used these polys a lot more than the Prismas. I feel way more confident, and I think my flower, so look at this flower here, how rough that looks, and look at this flower here. I can just feel the difference. In a way, I'm going back to the middle a little bit. I just want to darken the very center up. I'm going to have a metallic, some sort of gold metallic. Getting a little bit of the transition from the purple in the curve of the petal. And then we're going to move on. We only have so much time. Okay, I'm liking that one. Okay, so the next I would like to work with, I'm gonna grab these three. I'm gonna have this pink in the wings. Uh, let's go ahead and reverse them. So we're going to do the flowers that stay in the red-violet range. So it's, it's going to be hard to read the names. Pink Matter Lake 129, Fuchsia 123, Crimson 134, again Crimson, just as strange looking to me as Mauve, Middle Purple Pink 125. And I am going to go for this fluffy flower which is right here. And let's see how well I can get this rather nondescript flower to look fluffy. I might have to grab, I do have this a darker color in the back behind my, I'm gonna stop there, I'm gonna grab Red Violet, 194. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so this one will help me get get some fluff going. Uh, I Remember I said I'm working on shadows, so this Red Violet I pulled as to be one of my possible um, shadow colors. And behind the, the purples, I have this Delft Blue, and we'll see how well those work for shadowing. And I am not opposed. I'm moving to, on to the um, One Lighter, which is the Crimson 134. I am not opposed to pull either Indigo Blue, Indenthrine Blue. I, I think I even came out, grabbed the black. Um, I'm using all those colors, so I had to go to my cup for that project. See, I'm able to get a little more of a fluffy look. I'm, I'm envisioning like a dahlia. Going back to that red violet, right? Yeah, red violet. Trying to get the fluff going is not easy. And I could, if I wanted to, Sharpen this. Sharpen it a little more. Uh, this wood is a little bit heavier than, say, the Kalur wood. Uh, it has a different pitch, a little bit lower pitch. Okay, so I hope that I don't make this flower look so perfect that then I'm going to want to go take, I, I'm going to keep all of my sets of pencils out. Normally when I do a quadrant or an image, uh, unless I have a lot of homework for myself to do later, I'll just put the pencils away. Uh, all of these are staying out. Going, um, I still have one last light pink. That is, I think it's Pink Matter Lake 129. I just finished with the fuchsia. 
And I think for now, I like that well enough that I'm just going to move on to the next one so we have a little more time. I am going to move to this one here, um, which might be a bigger challenge because it's one that this middle purple pink, I hope is going to be vibrant enough to look as vibrant with just a hint of lavender as this one here. Let's see how it goes. I am considering, uh, I'm trying to get ready for big and I am making great progress on my Star Joy Gold to Prismacolor conversion chart. And I do want to get that started, but I know it's going to slow me down for this scene. So I may, I have some card class um, projects that I need to finish. Uh, and so I may take tomorrow off from doing the daily color so that I get one day to try to get the luminance color numbers attached, which will make it so much easier. Uh, this is the fuchsia, by the way, fuchsia. This is medium pressure now. And it is, it's the first of all of these flowers. It's the first of the flowers that I'm actually going in with enough pressure to fill in all the tooth and burnish. I do want a little bit of that uh, la lavender purple. This has a touch of it, crimson. So I'm going to see if I can get my undertone. I think it's going to work. Yep, that is exactly what I am after. And then I do want to go around, actually, the, it looks to me like if I'm looking at this over here, I did not go with any light pink. So here I go, taking this lavender and then one last little bit I'm going back to the darkest middle purple pink and I want to get a little dark in there Not bad. Okay, moving to the next flower. I have another um, with a little bit more violet on that little flower there, which is over here. And it's this one, the one in the middle, which is going to be fun because we get to do some shading on this. This actually has a little more of the red-violet color. So I'm using more of this. Now we are going to go to crimson, which is not red. It is my lavender. And I see that on this particular flower, instead to vary it, I have to grab something, something with purple, but not too dark. So oh, evidently I'm going with violet. 
138. Let's see how this does for us. Nice, yes, that's what I want. We have a lot of shadows on this one to build up. And I'm going to call that one done. I'm trying to keep moving. Okay, now I get to put all of these lovely red violets away. Because now we're going to do, we've got a light, starting with the light. So I've got two, this looks a little bit dark, light magenta, 119, and manganese violet 160. And I am going to take, I even have this uh, in the wings, violet 138. And the two that I'm going to work on now are these two flowers here. And they, see how light those are? They're, to me, they're like lilac. So let's see how this color, this is probably not the right color. I'm switching immediately to this violet. Uh, not wanting this to get too dark too fast, I'm going to be very, very light. Moving right on over to its somewhat twin. I might even, uh, the white, the polychromos white is a very translucent white and it, it or a colorless blender might make good options here for these two flowers that I don't want to get any darker. I purposely left this one lighter than this one for some variation. Moving on to the next flower, which I think I'm going to work on the one uh, this one's hiding in the corner, and that is this one. So I am going to be continuing to use this color of violet, and then I see where on the outer edges I went with some red violet. So This is going to be fun to do the shadows. I don't have like a really cool dark gray like I had uh, over here. I had dark gray and it has like a purple in it. And I don't have the nice dark colors uh, like the Prisma. So I will be playing around. with my polychromos color options. When it comes to the shadows. Okay, so that flower is done. Now, I have a flower. It is this one that has like heart-shaped petals. And over here you'll see this is a multi-colored flower. And I've done the same multi using all of the tones. So we're going to build that flower up. Um, and I'd been skipping the, the big heart petaled flowers. I've only done one. I did the, the color so that I have the mock-up ready because uh, I will be trying to replicate that. Okay, so I am going to grab a dark purple, blue violet, 137. And I've got these petals that kind of overlap each other. So I'm already building the shadows for the over the top 
reflect or no casting the shadow on the petals going underneath. Okay, so there's that. That is a top heart petal, and that's a top heart petal. And these others are somewhat obscured in shadow. I'm gonna set that down. So many colors. I'm gonna move to a violet, uh, manganese violet 160. It looks to me like the overall cast of these petals is more on the violet to pink. I will be getting the fuchsia next. Uh -huh, but I'm starting to see the the blends. Okay, so that goes in the middle. Let's grab our fuchsia. And I think Hub's over there and forgot that I'm filming. I wanted to get my filming done a little earlier today. Normally I would wait till he was taking a nap, but like I said, I've got a couple of card making things I need to do. Um, I'm going to confess. I really prefer right now with where things are at, I prefer coloring to card making. When I get to card making, I enjoy it. It's great fun, uh, but I love my coloring right now. And I have so many projects going in the coloring world. I owe you guys some things. So if I could get my card making stuff done, get it started tonight. Yeah, that's flowers coming along very nice. I want to bring in a little bit of a darker, uh, the middle purple pink, which actually is the darkest. I just want a a little hint and that hint is too circular all right so I'm going to finish up and if it looks a little rough it is I'm gonna come in and clean them up in fact I would call where where I'm coloring to with you guys for the most part on these is the to the ugly stage and leaving it in the ugly stage which is very difficult to do uh, it's a stage that uh, happens so this is the the lightest pink uh, called pink matter lake 129 and then i'm going to call this flower done and we will come back to it or I will, probably for homework. I do feel overall that I'm going to grab the mauve, which is the current darkest purple. I do have Delft Blue as a, another one shade darker. Getting to these petals that are underneath. And I think this is a good stopping point for that flower. Um, I do have two random pencils still in my hand and I am done. Oh, I have one last flower to do. And you know what? If you look at the this little flower here, that's the one I'm mimicking. It is pretty much all purple. So I'm starting with right off the bat with the Delft blue this is the darkest grape color in the poly arsenal that I could find that still has the purple then in my hand I have violet I'm gonna yeah this, this is a quick flower alright 
flowers are finished. Now, let's see, how am I doing for time? Yeah, so we are at the 45 and I need to get on to, we're gonna do greens. I'm gonna just do a chunk like I have been doing. I have three colors. A light, a medium, and a dark. Simple combo. Uh, 168 earth green yellowish. 167 permanent green olive. And 278, this one needs to be. Uh, scotch tape is your friend. If you do regular stickers, you can scotch tape all the way around. Just cut off the little zigzags. Don't tear it off the dispenser. Chrome oxide green. So these two have scotch tape over them. This one does not. And that's exactly what happens if you skip the tape. I'm starting with the middle and I am doing exactly what I did yesterday with the middle color. Going up the line to the middle of the leaf and then back down into the shadow area. And this middle green is actually a little bit light for me, uh, but it'll work. I had this as the lightest color and I felt it was too dark to be the lightest. Okay. I am not going to do very many of these and I'm going to grab some of the ivy. And go all the way. Going to go with my light color. few little shadow lines. Yeah, this is going to be a great shadow color. That makes up for the middle color not being quite dark enough, so that will work. going to do a tiny bit more of the light and then we'll move on to blue and be done. So again, right now I'm thinking that tomorrow I will not do a daily and I will post it in the community tab if I do decide that that is the best course of action. So there's the greens. Let's get going with blue. Now, I have not tested this. I had this as my lightest, Light Thello Blue 145. This is a little bit on the lavender side, this Sky Blue 146. So I am just going to put it down very lightly. Um, I just felt that this and then the color that was the next darker color was too dark compared to the lightest blues uh, for the other two that I've already used. I'm going in nice big ovals, light-ish pressure. This is a very 
soft blue. Yesterday I had mentioned about, see how this orange I went over, and there's another spot I went over. Uh, depending on how much homework time I have, I might actually clean those all up. Um, I noticed on the Prismacolor side, I had already mentioned that the uh, Prismas are really easy to commingle colors. Um, Calor is very forgiving, and as a rule, the polys, I can just take a light layer of this blue, and, it, and you can see it went right over the orange, but it doesn't blend in with the orange. If I kept at it, it would, but for the initial light layer I'm putting down, it is not altering the color and making it a mix of orange and blue. Okay, so that's the lightest blue, and I think that's a pretty good match to our other light blues. Let's see how the dark blue is going to look, which it is not a dark blue. Light, fallow blue. And again, this was sky blue, 146. So let's do... Um, now I'm doing ovals, a soft layer of this blue over the light. These are a pretty fast pencil. Even though I know they're a light layering, I find them pretty quick. So, there's the Calor, which is the most finished cluster of flowers, and here's what I did today. So I'm going to call this finished for the moment. Do all the YouTube things like share, comment, consider subscribing, and I will either be taking a day off to prep tomorrow, or you will see me here tomorrow. And I hope you will join me. See you then.